Jumpstart smelting is in place and Jumpstart essentials. It's time to wrap up our initial design of the Jumpstart factory by automating science. And that's the proper end of any good factory, being able to automate some technology advancement, get some new capabilities and upgrades in place. Notice all this space I've left though. I think this is really important, particularly when you're learning Factorio. Leave yourself way more space than you think you need. Now in doing this, I've expended some extra transport belts and power poles by having this gap and moving my science all the way up to the top here. But it also allows some flexibility. Say I wanted to add some more items down here. Maybe I said, you know what? I want to automatically produce steam engines and electric mining drills or something else. Well, I don't have to take down a bunch of items to do that. Now notice we're getting interrupted. These flashing warnings, the yellow one is telling us there's attacks, but the red one means there's damage. So we are getting hit a little bit more over here. We can see that's getting damaged, that turret. So we're going to go take care of that. A few more turrets and some more ammo spread around, but we also need to repair this one, which is going to require repair packs, one of the few items that we start with that we haven't dealt with yet. So we'll just snag a few of those, and you simply take them, left-click on whatever you need to repair. They'll consume part of the repair pack, and everything is back to full health. For the production on our science area itself, we have these two assemblers set up for the red automation science packs. We've seen this before, only now, of course, we're not crafting them by hand. We have the copper cables needed and the iron gear wheels. I have only one assembler for this because one of these will produce enough for 10 of these assemblers of the science packs. Most of the science packs take a fair amount of time to craft. And we have all these ghosted assemblers in here because I may want to expand this. Again, it's really important that you leave yourself the flexibility to scale up, in my opinion. And so throughout this run, in case players want to go faster than I'm going, I've got three to four times the amount of science that I'm actually using is what I'm going to aim for leaving the room on. But I don't like to really rush through the science because, in my opinion, if you're producing science and researching items faster than you can actually implement them, then it doesn't do you any good. And so I'm just going to keep it at a little bit of a slower pace. Now over here is where we're going to have a new science pack that we're going to be discovering shortly. And that's going to require inserters and transport belts. So I've got those on a belt here, winding their way around. Again, more ghosted assemblers. And that new science pack will be produced here. Combined on this belt with our red ones that we're already making. And up through here where we moved into my labs. I have 10 labs. And if we wanted to expand this further again, that's possible. We could just go straight up this way. But we could also do what has been called daisy chaining them. So if we knock out a couple of these just to show what we would do here. And we could just move them along like this. And we don't need to have another belt over here or anything to deliver the science. Because we can just put the inserters in here and it will pass them from one building to another. So a lot of people really like doing this. I'm not a particularly huge fan of it. I probably won't be seeing me do much of it if at all. But if you like that sort of aesthetic, then have at it. And of course, again, that's a really good way to just expand this operation with minimal effort. So getting back to this science pack, we need to look at how we're going to get that. And also, what's going on with our priorities in science going forward now that we have this automation area set up. In the research screen here then, we start out with our red automation science pack. And the basic process through the game is you have one type of science pack, which will allow you to research another one, which unlocks the next tier of items, more complex recipes, more convoluted items that you have to deal with. So we would go to logistics science pack. We will need some red ones to research that. And that's the one that we're looking at next, it's gonna give us that transport belt and inserter to be able to produce these. And then we can use the red and the green together, and those will give us military. Now, this doesn't unlock the next tier. This just allows us to research various items that are going to be combat-related. So that's just sort of one that's off the side of our path of progression through the tech trees of the game. But then we can also use our red and our green to get chemical science pack. And this is a really big jump around mid-game and one that really throws a lot of players for a loop. So if you're one of those, just hang on. We'll get there. But then we have red, green, and blue, which we can combine to get our purple. And our purple, our production, and also the yellow, our utility, requiring the same three. And these are your basic endgame science packs. Then there's a post-game one. There is infinite research you can do at the end to continually upgrade your capabilities in certain areas. 
And also, right at the end, we'll want to research this just to get this satellite here. And this is the Space Science Pack. Notice that the technology that allows us to win the game is the rocket silo. Literally tells you it allows you to launch a rocket and win the game. And that requires those five key parts. And these are the five that we're really going to use to measure our progression through the game. We've already done the pre-science part when we didn't have any power on using all burner tech. And then we have automation, logistics, chemical production utility, or red, green, blue, purple, yellow, however you want to think of that. So those five stages. And right now we're capable of doing the red and almost about to do the green. So how do we want to progress through this? There's a variety of priorities that you can take. But as I've said, my focus is really going to be on keeping pollution down to lower Navian evolution, make the Navians a minimal threat, and so that we can spend more of our time not fighting them, but actually growing our factory. So since my goal is to keep pollution down, I'm going to research items that allow me to do that first, and then I'm going to move into other areas. To begin with then, so we can get them started, we are going to hit our logistic science packs here. And then after that, we're going to want to get steel. And that's our next big project to really set up an area for steel because it's a little more complicated than anything that we have done before on the smelting side. Logistic science pack research just finished up. We're beginning to produce those and we'll be on to the steel processing now, which require only the red packs. Green ones will get loaded into the labs, two per lab just to have them ready. And the rest will sit on the belt and wait for when they're needed. Now we're burning through the red science packs with this short processing time project. A lot of them early on are that. And we're not using most of the labs. This is really not going to be wasteful though. Because later on in red and green we will have a project that gets up to 60 seconds. And most of them are in the 15 to 30 second range. But the 60 second time being the highest is what I have targeted. We're going to produce 10 per minute out of the green. And so that will be able to satisfy all of those. And we won't have any wasted science packs even when the processing time gets longer. Now out in our map here we can see a variety of things. We've got, oh we're getting hit here. Let's take a look at that. Yeah. So we're going to want to bolster this area and repair that obviously as we continue to look through and we're getting hit some more over here. So that's fun. But over here we can see on the west we have revealed some new wonderful enemy bases as we continue our exploration with our radar. So we're going to need to concern ourselves with that. We can see just the pollution basically surrounding this nest. So that's continuing to be a problem. They're going to send more and more our way. Pollution getting a little thicker here in the middle. I'm going to want to put up turrets along here and over here. Not so much down this area because of the forest, but to complete protection around our area. Now that we pretty much know how large it's going to be, you can see the transport belts are in yellow here. Blue for buildings that we've produced. We've even got this purple here showing the ghosted buildings. And because of all this, a lot of players like to put in their jumpstart base the black or military to get more upgrades early on. There's still plenty of upgrades to our combat capabilities that we can get, though, by just utilizing the red and green science. So we'll do that as needed. And if we put up the black science in this area... Then we have to take it all down and move it again when we get to our larger, complete, full factory later on. I don't really want to do that. I just want to put in here what's needed and not try to over-engineer this part of the factory. And then that's less we have to take down and just makes things simpler if we don't need that. So we'll get into steel when Factorio Demystified returns. Thanks everyone for watching. See you soon.